How many just happy to be in the house today? Yeah. We're going to be preaching to you this, this sermon about Pentecost Sunday. And this is probably my favorite day of the year when it comes to uh, Christianity. It is, it is a celebration. It's not the day, of course, you know, but it is a celebration, a chosen day to celebrate the specific moment of the birth of the church. When the church was birthed with power and presence of God. And so today I'm going to preach that very thing to you and explain to the best I can what this is that it happened and how it happened and why. And at the end of this message today, we're going to have an altar call for those who would like to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or perhaps healed in your body. Perhaps whatever it may be, we'll have people ready to pray for you. And if you want to get baptized today before the service ends, when we give this altar call, make your way to this door to my right. There'll be somebody there waiting to meet you. And we'll baptize you today on Pentecost Sunday. This is a powerful day. Amen? So I'm excited about that. And when we're baptizing people, I'm going to ask everybody to hang around for a few minutes. Let's, let's watch that and celebrate these new lives and new beginnings together as they get baptized in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Let's dive right into this. We'll start with Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. And when they therefore came together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The disciples still had this idea that, that Jesus had come to create war. He had come to build an army. He had come to set up his own kingdom. And so they were still thinking along these ways. Here's what Jesus says. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put into his own power. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So if you can imagine this Jesus who's been hanging out with them, he's been crucified, he's been resurrected, he's walked through a wall, he showed up in the room with them, he's talking to them, and now he's standing beside them, and as he gives them the, these directions about power that's coming, he just begins to float into the air and disappear. That's pretty cool. This is not some fake super, superhero movie, this is a, a real thing. He began to lift off the ground and rise into the air. Now if you want your Jesus to stay on the ground and be nice and calm and polite, you just don't know who he is. He did something powerful. Clouds came around him as he went into the heavenlies. These men were so astonished, they stood there staring like this into heaven. So long that two men appeared beside them, two angels, and they said, why are you still looking into heaven? He's gone. But I want to tell you, he's coming back in same like manner as you see him go. I know you're still shocked and amazed at what you just witnessed. He just ascended into heaven. Clouds came about him, and he just went straight up in the air. And you're just standing there, wait, he's gone. But let me tell you the most important thing. He's coming back. He's coming back in like manner. This God that we serve is not weak. He's not powerless. He is power. It's not for you know the times or the seasons, but which the Father has put in his own power. That word power. He says, you shall receive power. It comes from the word, the Greek word dunamis. It's, pronounced, it's spelled dynamis. It's pronounced dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. Dunamis is power. It's an incredible word to look at. Now, when you look at the word power and what it means, uh, there's, a, there's a dictionary called the Strong's Greek and Hebrew Dictionary. So it takes every word in the Bible and it shows you its original meaning, whether it be in Hebrew, whether it be in Greek. And so that's what this is. The Greek word for power is dunamis. Very cool. Now, there's a number associated with that word in the dictionary, and that number is G1411. The Greek word 1411 is that word in Scripture. So what you find out is this. You find out that the word power, this dunamis word, is used several times in Scripture, but not always with the word power. It's used with other words as well. I'll show you. Dunamis also means mighty work, mighty work, strength, miracle, might, virtue, mighty. This dunamis word does not always just mean power. It also means these words. These words are in Scripture, and the dunamis word, number 1411, is what's used to define these words. 
So I think that's very interesting. What does this dunamis mean? Well, number one, it's 77 times it's used for, to mean power, 11 times mighty work, 7 times strength, 7 times miracle, 4 times for might, and virtue 3 times, and mighty 2 times. All through Scripture. Dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. It means strength, power, ability, inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth, power to perform miracles, power, moral power, excellence of soul, the power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth, power and resources arising from numbers, power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. Dunamis. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read some scriptures where you see this word being used in other ways, but as well, of course, as in power. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. Jesus says it here. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Everybody say, dunamis. Every time you see 1411, say, dunamis. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here's another place that dunamis is used to define power. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Everybody say, that was really weak. That was the weakest power word I've ever heard in my life. The 9 o'clock crowd, which had nowhere near your number, was much louder than you. I'm going to tell you right now. Mighty works. So the word works here is dunamis. Interesting that dunamis is not only just talking about something from God, but dunamis can also be talking about what we do with it. Somebody say amen. Let's watch this one here. Mark chapter 5 and verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out from him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? I'll read it to you in Luke. Luke's, Luke's a little better to read. And Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. At this moment, this is the moment in Scripture when there's a little woman who had an issue of blood. She was sick for many, many years, this issue. This issue prevented her from being in public. She couldn't touch a man, be around people in a crowd. But she heard this Jesus was coming down the street. And this woman decided... Whatever I have to do, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. I'm going to find a way to touch him. And she pressed her way through a crowd and found a way to touch him. When she touched him, dunamis, his internal power, the same power mentioned earlier with the Father has in his own power, but you shall receive power. Same word, same word, virtue. He says, virtue has left my body. Power has left my body. Before the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost, there was one person so hungry to touch him to get what they needed. She literally pulled dunamis by her faith out of his body. Oh, I don't, I don't, some of you, some of you starting, I'm telling somebody in this room right now, you need to quit waiting around for something to happen and you need to start making something happen. Somebody can activate faith right now and press your way through. You're breaking all the rules. You're pushing past people. You're getting to where you can. And when you touch, you can literally pull from him what was reserved for a later before the Apostles felt it. She felt it. Before we know about the wind blowing, she, because he felt it, leave. There's a faith in us that can literally change the plan if we want to operate in it. We've gotten used to everyone else telling us what we have to do, what we can't do. That's just easier to ride along. But I'm going to tell you right now, we got to quit listening to the voices that want to steal your faith and destroy what God's planted in you. And if somebody will begin to activate it like never before, you will pull dunamis from heaven itself. But you got to want to. Virtue left his body. Power, dunamis left. Luke chapter 10. 
Behold, Jesus says, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. People read this and they don't understand. They think, you mean I can go over and step on a snake? Yeah, I can kill me a scorpion. No, no. You, what was in the garden that whispered into Eve? A serpent. And God cast it to the ground and said, now you'll go around your belly, eat the dust of the ground the rest of your days. Serpent, the lying devil, the enemy that would speak to you and tell you, oh, you don't feel it. It's, you're not going to feel it. It can't happen. It won't happen. Just you need to let it go. He says, I'm going to give you dunamis to make sure you can walk over the sound of the enemy and he cannot confuse you. This scorpion's right here. This is not just something on the ground with a stinger. It's life's issues. This is, this is the divorce. Oh, come on, church. This is, this is the, the cancer. This is the sickness. This is the issue. This is the kids running from God. This is the unsaved spouse. He says, I'm going to give you some dunamis in your life where the devil has to shut up and cancer has to flee. But you got to operate in it. I want to give you something you can use. This is transformative for your life. We're not supposed to watch the world go by. We're supposed to impact the world. Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 1. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also the Greek the word is power dunamis so now we're also learning word is dunamis spirit is dunamis power is dunamis what he wants to give us is dunamis it is supposed to be in us We love the idea of this Jesus. And I think I may have told the first service. I say extra stuff in the first service, not because, not because I have extra things to say, but because sometimes I just can't shut up. I told somebody one day, I said, I should get an award for what I don't say while I'm preaching. Because, buddy, it's all running through there, I can promise you. But I'm talking about this dunamis, I'm talking about this power, this grace that we're supposed to have and walking it all the time. And, 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 and what I've witnessed happening over years and years and years and years and years is the church, the church getting softer and softer and weaker and weaker. It ain't done a certain way, I don't like it. If it don't sound like this, I don't like it. If you don't preach it like that, I don't like it. If the seat ain't soft, I don't like it. If the lights are too bright, I don't like it. If the sound ain't right, I don't like it. I just, it gets softer, softer, softer. And everybody's catering to the humanity. Instead of pleading for the glory. I just wish you could fire me up. Fire yourself up. Do not miss this thing. But the church, I've watched it get weak, 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 weak. And then and then I'm seeing what I believe to be a remnant rising up. A remnant of people who, in the middle of all the chaos, is still going to do what the kingdom says to do. A people that says, no, we're not going to back down now. This is not the time to back down. I've watched it happen for years. Listen, I, I want everybody to always enjoy themselves. That's the kind of guy I am. I want everybody to have a good time. I want everybody to enjoy. But the thing I want the most, I really want the most, is the presence of God. I want to fall. So what I need is people that will stand with me for the presence of God to fall more than anything else to happen. More than anything else. It is the call of the church to walk in power, not weakness. Well, the Bible says to turn the other cheek. Let me help you with something. This turn the other cheek thing is not talking about your life. It's talking about insult. Someone insults you, you know, like on social media. You don't have to respond. Just earn the other cheek. Why? Because your character is deeper than them with their insults. 
Turning the cheek is about character assassination. It's about insulting you, not about you losing your life or letting someone take the life of your loved one. Well, you know, Jesus would never harm. People that say stuff like that don't read their Bible. Let me give you an example. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, go read it for yourself. I'm not making this up. He asked the disciples, what do we have with us? And they said, we have two swords, sir. He said, that'll be enough. The disciples were armed. They were not walking around, oh, God, don't hurt us today. No, they thought differently. That's why Peter was able to cut off the ear of the servant. They had two swords among them. They didn't walk around weak. And I'm not telling everybody, go get yourself armed. I'm just telling you this. Quit acting like you're weak. You have dunamis, you have power. Operate in your power. Quit being afraid of all the world and start speaking to the world what it's supposed to do. Be the sound that they haven't heard. This Jesus that we talk about, you got to tell him, I'm, I'm working hard today. To get me a good lunch. Good one. <laughs> this Jesus we're talking about, the Bible says in Revelation chapter, chapter 1. Give me an idea what it looks like. He says his hair and head were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like flames of fire. The first time he came to the earth, he came in to Jerusalem riding on the back of a donkey. A donkey representing a work to be done, a, a job to be finished. The second time he comes back, he'll be riding on the back of a white horse. A white horse means war. When he comes back the second time, he's not coming back to say, hey, everybody, let's just all get along. He's coming back for wrath. He's coming back to save his bride. It's not about friendship. It's about war. And Revelation says his eyes are flames of fire. This is not some candle idea of romance. This is trying to tell you about the dunamis inside of him. Listen to this. That word fire literally and figuratively means lightning. It's not a flicker of a fire. No, no, it's lightning strikes. In his, it's lightning in his eyes. That word flash, flames, flames means, that word flames literally means to flash. He had flashes of lightning in his eyes. It's a representation of the dunamis inside of him. He came in like a lamb the first time. He's coming back like the lion the second time. He is not something that's soft and can be taken and, and he let himself be crucified. He could have called 10,000 angels down at one time. But he allowed it because he loved us. Jesus said it in Luke chapter 10. He said, I told him, yes, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. He wasn't saying what Satan looks like, he was telling them how he kicked him out of heaven with one look from his own eyes. And like lightning in the speed of light, he was flung from the heavenlies to the earth. Like lightning. This Jesus we serve is powerful. He's mighty. He's great. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 27, for as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man when he comes back, it'll be like lightning. The speed of light is 670 million miles an hour. You're talking about something that's hard to describe and incapable to capture. This is the God that we serve. This is the one that we serve. The speed of the Holy Ghost is the speed of lightning. That's why I can be in this room today and pray for somebody in Pakistan and their life be changed right now. Do you believe that, church? Do you know someone who's sick right now? It's not in this room. Pray for them right now. Wait 10 seconds. Pray for them right now. They're going to feel that where they are right now. Come on, speak the word. Speak the word. Speak. Don't look to me. Do it. You do it. Use some dynamis. It's amazing how God moves. In John chapter 20, and when he had said, he showed up to them again, his hands and his side. 
And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. What? They're in a room. He has come through the walls of the room. He has appeared. He has shown himself. And now he looks at his disciples and goes, receive you the Holy Ghost. He wasn't giving it to them at that moment, but he was showing them what it was. He was showing them what you're going to have is coming from inside of me. With the same breath that I spoke the world into existence, I'm about to breathe it into you. <sighs> Receive you the Holy Ghost. That word ghost, that word ghost, uh, I'm sorry, word uh, 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 ghost means a current of air, a breath, a blast. It's the one thing everybody in the world right now is afraid of. We're afraid of it. And he says, I've got a breath for you. I've got dunamis for you. That word, then we see it here, all of a sudden you see it happening. And suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them. Go back to this. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. When the disciples are sitting in the room, there's 120 of them. We don't know how many got there to begin with. We just know how many was in the room when it happened. And when it happened, there's 120 and they all heard the same sound that they heard when he was in the room and went... And they knew then, something's happening. There's a breath, there's a breeze blowing in the room. A sound of a rushing mighty wind fill all the house. And then cloven tongues, like as of fire. This word fire here again, when it's to go back to the Greek, is lightning set upon each of them. I need to get a visual image just for a second. The wind is blowing in the room. They are feeling the presence of God and what's sitting on them is not a flickering flame but lightning strikes as it moves through them because cloven tongues, the arc of a lightning strike is on top of them. Are y'all seeing this? This is not some weak God who gave us nothing to survive with. Fire is lightning, and wind is his breath. That word wind, that word wind means a respiration, a breeze, a breath. Mighty rushing wind. The breath of God moved into the house, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues as a fire. That fire is powerful. And then suddenly they are beginning to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance. This is, this, is, this is Pentecost. This is the church. This is this church. There's a lot of churches in the world. There's a lot of churches in the world. But let me tell you right now, not all of them are Pentecost churches. Not all of them are Breath of God churches. I'm not going to name any. I'm just saying They'd rather make man happy than God happy. Therefore, the fire and the power is not needed. Not needed. But in this house, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost, the dunamis, the wind, the breath of God breathing life into us. We need CPR from heaven. And they begin to speak with other tongues. And the Spirit gave the utterance. Now, let me give you another image real quick. And I, I know I'm past time. Just hang on. Because we're going to pray for people when they get the Holy Ghost. Understand this. There are people from around the whole area, different tribes, different regions, for the celebration of Pentecost. And they're out there. It's a feast. It's a festival. And so this is why it's called Pentecost. Okay? Not, not because fire fell, but because it was a feast. That's why they're there. And people on the street from around everywhere are hearing 120 people speaking in tongues their own individual languages. 
They're on the street going, whew, I'm hearing this Jew is speaking my language. That's not even possible. How, does, how, does, how do they know? And every one of them is hearing about the goodness of God, the greatness of God, how great he is, who he is. And they're speaking, and the tongues are moving, and people are stopping, and they're listening, and they're watching. So much to the point that they begin to ask, what's wrong with these people? Let me tell you something. When you get dunamis in your life, you will learn to speak a lot of languages. Sometimes you have no, no idea who you're talking to. And other times you'll walk into a room and God will say, talk like this. And you'll talk talking like this. And next thing you know, a miracle happens in your life. Do not miss. I've learned business language and I don't have a business degree. Come on, somebody. You will find yourself being led to speak what you could not speak before. I remember being in church services one time years ago, and I think it went, maybe my dad or my mom was, was in the worship service, and, went, and she was speaking in tongues. I think it was mom. Speaking in tongues in the worship service. And there was a guest on the back row of the building. And after service, the guest walked up and said something like, have you been to Russia? And they're like, no. Well, you were telling me that I should trust Jesus today and give my life to him in my native tongue. I'm, it's just, it's just too sci-fi for everybody. It's just too much. Just, just out there too much. Can we just all just kind of calm down? Stop getting all excited about this Jesus. Yeah. And you think superheroes are cool. This dude here. They begin to ask, are they drunk? Look how they're acting. How can they speak our languages? How are they doing this? Peter walks up and gives the speech heard around the world as far as I'm concerned. And he says it like this. Lift up his voice and said, You men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words. These men are not drunken as you suppose. It's just the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning, number one. They're not drunk. That usually happens much later in the day. It's 9 o'clock. They're not drunk. But let me tell you another thing that's really cool. My wife discovered this a few weeks ago, and it was really cool how she presented it. And that is this. In those days, people would always seek after spiritual things. They wouldn't be things of God, but spiritual things. So they had these things called soothsayers and fortune tellers. And those who would get into a hypnotic trance and, and speak in tongues to, to give them their future. Matter of fact, the Egyptians practiced quite a bit. And, and, and every, every culture did. You would, you would have to go down these dark trails late at night, midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning to get these little places. And there would be, a, be a, a, a person, most likely a woman, in this little area with, with, a, with a water place all hidden away, real spooky and mystical. And usually they were drunk or intoxicated on something, so they would jerk, and they would begin to give their fortune and try to speak. And so people were used to an idea of spirituality looking like that, the demonic. Uh, let me help you with something. That still happens today. It's, it's 1-800-SECOND-HOTLINE. It's, it's all these artists on the radio conjuring spirits in your songs and your radio. You know, some of, some of our favorite artists still conjuring. A lot of the greatest songs that we know and sing to this day were written while intoxicated or extremely high on something. Maybe that was too harsh. I don't know. I mean, come on. I like the Eagles too, but they literally sang about the Hotel California. Have you heard that song? It's talking about hell. The problem is I liked the song. That's just, it still happens. They're not drunk. They're not what you call spiritual. That's not what you think it is. Something much deeper than that. And then he goes on to say this. It's spoken by the prophet Joel. For these are not drunken as you suppose just the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
I love this is that. I love, I love this. This is that. This, remember I told you some 800 prophecies for Jesus to arrive in the Old Testament. This is what was happening back in the Old. This is that, which we were speaking about all that time ago. This is that. It's here now. What's spoken by the prophet Joel? And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. Everybody say the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness. The moon into blood before that great notable day the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall Shall be saved. This is that. Lord, if you spoke it, I believe it. It's going to happen. If you spoke it then, I believe it now, and it's still happening. When I was six years old, it happened to me, and it can happen to you right now. Do not miss power to think different, walk different, act different. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. They felt bad. I've called you a bunch of drunks, and I also heard what you had to say, and what I had to hear now is affecting me. What do we do? What do we do with this information? What do we do with it? Peter makes a great statement. Repent. What's that mean? It means two things. Change the way you think. And turn from wicked ways. That does not mean switch political parties. It means change the way you think. And turn from wickedness. Change the way you think. It's, it's sometimes tough to get people to realize that it's our mind, it's our thoughts that's messing us all up. You, you let something get in there, next thing you know, it's planted a base. It's, it's got a home base in it, it got walls up around it, and it sits there for years and years and years and years. And, you, and you're living a certain way because you've allowed a thought to hang on to you. And now it controls your every single day, your thought, your thought. I've done that. I'm guilty of it. I've done it. My wife will chew me out sometimes. What are you thinking? I'm like, don't get out of my head, woman. Leave me alone. You could think it that way. Why? Because you're affecting everybody. Stop thinking like that. Well, I just want to be miserable. No, not in this house. Not now. You will think differently. It's a choice you got to make. To live in dunamis or not live in dunamis. It's a choice, a decision to change the way you think. I know the world wants us to change how we, how we talk, how we think. How They want us to all think a certain way. A way, one way, everybody think the same way. That's evil. Just want you to know that. Not going to happen. If you're all thinking the same way, that's called an occult. Don't fall for it. Don't, I don't care if someone tells you they're a they and a them. They still a he and a she. Don't start falling for it. But that's how they feel. Feel it. I ain't got to join you. Feel it, but I ain't got to participate. Feel it, but don't expect me to act the same way you're acting. Feel it all you want to, but it doesn't change who I am in God. I'll love you. I'll pray for you, but I'm not changing. I mean, they're literally confessing. There's more than one of them in them. Call me a them and a they. Hello, Legion. How you doing today? 
Come on, somebody, help me out for a minute. Don't you dare get quiet in here. This is the house of the Lord. The word of God is what's true. The world is a lie and will always be a lie. It's sent to destroy. It's sent to kill. Stand up. Speak the word. Don't fall for the mess. Legion, come out of them in Jesus' name. People of Dunamis, start casting out spirits. Don't cater to the spirits. Whoo, my God, have mercy. We've become so desensitized by boundaries and lines and political stuff and junk. We're all afraid to say anything. Let me tell you what the word says. I can always say this. I don't care who wants to hear it or doesn't want to hear it. It does not lie. Come out, devils. You have no right to those souls. That's not yours to have. Church of living God is full of power and dunamis. Cast out some devils. Walk on some serpents. Step over some scorpions. Quit looking for someone else to give you a feel good. Light up your own dunamis. You've got it in you. That was a side sermon. Sorry about that. And with many other words, he did exhort, save yourselves from untoward generation that they, and they gladly received his word and were baptized in Jesus' name. And 3,000 souls added that day. 3,000. One day, 3,000 people. That's going to happen here very soon. That would be the first day. The second day would be 6,000 people. Is there anybody with some dunamis in the house? Third day will be 12,000 people. Fourth day, 24,000 people. When lightning strikes the ground, it has to find a place of agreement. For lightning to strike, it needs a place of agreement. That's what happens. Positive ions, negative ions charging. Negative ions in the sky. Lightning is searching, searching, searching. The ground provides a positive pull. And heaven meets earth. That's how lightning strikes. It doesn't strike because it just happened to hit this spot. No, this spot said, here. Here. This spot said, now. On the day of Pentecost, they were filled with power. Dunamis, breath from Jesus, the Holy Ghost into their life. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Everything changed. Those same people who were so afraid at one time, even just walking with Jesus with them. I mean, the moment he was arrested, Peter denied him three times. After this infilling of the Holy Ghost, this dunamis moment, what happens? They come walking out of there. There's a man that can't walk sitting by the gate. Man, sitting by the gate right there, sitting by the gate. Walking by and said, what you need? Well, I can't walk. I don't have silver and gold. What do you have? I have dunamis. I have power. Rise up and walk men who were cowards before this moment all of a sudden are picking up the lane walk walk rise up be healed casting out devils that's the church that's the church the church is not comfortable seats and everyone just loving each other it's power it's power, the authority to do and be filled with the glory of God. Every person in this room, I don't know when, what time, I, some of you may have already received the Holy Ghost. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. You're here for the first time. You're talking about, he's saying, talking about lightning, and he's talking about, all this, are you, this man's crazy. But you'll go home and watch Thor. 
with his lightning in his eyes, little, little hammer. Thor the fabulous. We'll get all excited about that when the Bible had all that first. The real stuff. The real stuff. In just a moment, I'm going to have the prayer. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come on down. Prayer team, come on down. Just so y'all understand something. This says to lay hands upon the sick and they will recover. Now, if you don't want nobody to lay hands on you, we're not going to do that. But if you want someone to do what this says, we're here to do that right now. Furthermore, if there's someone here today who wants to feel dunamis, who wants to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, this day is for you. Every Sunday is, but right now specifically, it's Pentecost Sunday. If you want to get baptized like every single person in the New Testament church was, Hallelujah. If you want to get baptized in Jesus' name, this is your day right now. Well, I, I didn't register. That's okay. We got plenty of shorts and t-shirts. And the water's already good. It's somewhat warm. I mean, I don't know how warm, but somewhat. It's ready for you. All you got to do is just a moment when I tell you to stand, is make your way to that door right there. See the sign? Oh, we got a sign. Look at that. That's kind of cool. We got a little sign. That's great. Right here. Baptism team waiting to baptize you. Today. We're going to baptize three in a little bit. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When this altar call finishes up, don't run out of here too quick. It would be amazing if we celebrate these three souls getting baptized in Jesus' name together as the body of Christ. But here's how we're going to end this service today. You can think I'm crazy all you want to. I'm used to that. But I want you to realize this book is real. And what's in it is meant for us. And we don't have to walk around afraid of the world and afraid of life's issues. We can be filled with the saving grace of God, filled by His Holy Ghost power, walking in dunamis and strength. And let me tell you something, that changes how you talk to people. It changes how you complain about stuff. It affects everything. As a matter of fact, you know how you can tell someone's filled with the Holy Ghost? They show some virtue. Remember that word? They show some virtue in their life. They act differently. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost today, but you're still a devil to everybody else, we're going to question what you got. You may not have what you think you have because that's not what God's supposed to look like. Virtue, power, grace. There's mighty works in there. The things you do shift. It's not about what I can get. It's about what I can do. Even if I don't like how it's done, I'm going to do it. I'm getting involved. Why? Why? Because I got to do. Works are involved with the process. Mm. Pulling wire is a work. We had a bunch of guys last week. Man, I'm so thankful for those guys. They climbed through the attic so I didn't have to do it. Thank you so much. Pulling wire to make our sound system better. It'll all be done in a couple of months. So if you don't like it now, hang out. If you don't like it then, good luck. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. But I'm telling you, this is a day that your life will be changed. Are you tired of always losing your battles? Are you tired of walking in a life not knowing whether you're saved or not? This is your day. Are you tired of always hitting the same wall over and over again and not having success? This is your day. Let's stand together. If you're getting baptized, come on. For those who have already scheduled, come on. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm going to pray for you. As I'm praying for you, they're fixing to sing. While they're singing, I want you to worship. I want you to call on some dunamis. Ask the Holy Ghost to fall. And if you want to receive the Holy Ghost today, if you want to get prayed for to be healed, whatever it is, come out of your seat, come to the front. I know these people. These are wonderful praying people. They will pray with you, and we will see you get filled with the Holy Ghost. We'll see cancer flee your body. We'll see sickness leave. We'll see your marriage get healed. We'll see all kinds of things happen. Why? Because dunamis is moving in the house. So right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to preach a message 
on Pentecost Sunday. I thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Ghost is still falling. I thank you, God, that we still believe in who you really are. Lord, I ask right now, blow through this house, Lord Jesus, that every soul be affected, every heart be changed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want prayer, come right now. If you want prayer, come right now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. I know, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Hey, we're live. Wow, I thought I was live. Sorry, he was I wore out. Right there. I'm, I'm ready for a nap. Yeah, he said he was going to have a really good lunch, but I'm I believing am. a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, right now, we're about to baptize a young man, and I don't know if you can see on my shoulders a screenshot, I think it's actually it's over your shoulder, right, right, right there he is, look, fixing to get baptized right now, and we have, I think, three, and there's a couple more maybe joining as well. I can step this way. No, it's okay, I just wanted to see what's going to happen, so hey, these are amazing days here at Central mm-hmm. Triad Church, and we want you to, we're so thankful you're online with us and watching and participating, and can't wait to see you in person, and I know it's coming soon, but we just want you to know that God is doing a powerful thing. And we don't want to miss out. That's it. And, you know, the amazing, one of the amazing things about God is, is that he's doing it here. Yes. He's doing amazing things. Yes. But he's doing amazing things right where you're at, too. Right. He, he knows no limits. He's not bound by time or space. Ooh, yes. Just, just simply by his name. Whenever you speak his name, you are pulling on that dumas, that power. Dunamis. And in, dunamis, yes. And inviting it yes. into your life. Okay, so let's get started with some questions. So one okay. of the first ones is, how do you get the Holy Ghost? How do you get it? Oh, it's real simple. You just say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's that simple. Yes. I mean, it, it, I've seen it happen differently for, for every person I come across, right? In the day of Pentecost, it was mm-hmm. a major a, a major moment happened uh-huh. all a at one time. Yeah. A corporate moment happened. Mm-hmm. That's one of the easiest ways for it to happen is in a corporate atmosphere like this. So in a church service where people are pulling, that's why the Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together because powerful things happen when when the body is together. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a, right. there's a, um, a synergy. A synergy that takes yes. place. It's it's spiritual, and it's, and it's incredible. So it's easy to have. You say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then and then let God speak through you. What yeah. happens is, I've seen, I've prayed with people before, and, and we'll pray for a few minutes, send me an altar call or something, you know, uh-huh. and, then, and then they go home and lay down in bed and start talking in tongues. They're like, wait a minute, what just happened? Yeah, you know? exactly. And I've seen it differently for every person like mm-hmm. that. But I've also seen it where it happened. Just yes. And so we always encourage people to start out with saying, God, yes. forgive me of wrongful thoughts, wrongful words, wrongful yes, repent, deeds. Repent. I am sorry. Please forgive me. You are the only one that can cleanse me and make me whole. I need you to be my Savior. Will you fill me with your power and with yes. your Holy Ghost? And then you just start telling him how appreciative you are of what he is doing and what he's already done. And as, as you begin to just pour your love out yes. on him with words, <clears throat> It's not long before that transition will happen where it doesn't quite sound the same way anymore. (laughs) And don't get bound up by what it sounds because we've seen so many people just be enslaved by that. Well, I didn't sound like Sister Susie whenever (laughs) they spoke in tongues. Right. And I've heard people who see the Holy Ghost like a baby exactly. the first time. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like a a baby trying to communicate. Yes. You know what? Again, no one's here to judge the tongue. Mm -mm. If someone's judging the tongue... They got other religious issues you don't want to get involved yes, with. Okay, yes. so just leave that it's alone. It's a matter of surrendering <laughs> that right. thing that gets us into the most and why trouble. why is that thing so important? Because this thing, the tongue we're talking about, <laughs> has the power. Yes, the Bible says yes. the tongue has power, too. Life and death. Life and death and the power of the tongue, which yes, is why exactly. when dunamis comes into our life, the Holy Ghost comes into our exactly. life. Exactly. The tongue is one of the things that, that is taken over mm-hmm. to, to show us and prove to us, wait a minute, something's here. Exactly. That wasn't here yes, before. Yes, there you go. Right. It, it's kind of that proof that you go, oh, I did experience something that, right. wow, was beyond me. And, and just, let, me, let me get back to one thing. What she said about repent and how she said that is probably one of the simplest, most beautiful ways to do it. Forgive me for these things. And then walk in an expectation this is mm-hmm. going to happen because the Bible says repent and be baptized. Right. If you haven't been baptized yet, we are here. The water's ready. We want to baptize you right now. And then the Bible says, it shall happen. Exactly. What does that mean? Promise. That's a promise. Yes, yes. This will take place in your life. I think I forgot to say it at the day of today's sermon. I did in the first service. I, I think she covered it, though. Oh, did I? Okay, good. <laughs> it will happen. It doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't, you don't win, but I know it will. So trust God for that. And I watch, and, and the way you know what's happening is you change. Yes, you yes. You change. Your life begins to mm-hmm. change. How you speak, how you walk, how you talk, how you do things yes. changes, and you begin to live 
after Christ. Exactly. You live for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and yes. I, you made a good statement. Don't tell me you have the Holy Ghost if you're treating everybody else like a jerk. <laughs> right. You know, Where's there's the virtue, evidence. Right? Where's, Where's the virtue? Where's the That's virtue? going to start coming to the forefront, and you're going to go start to say something, then you're going to feel that little quickening going, yeah. well, I don't need to say that. Maybe yeah. I should rearrange that. Right, 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 right. You know, it's good to have that. Everybody needs that. We Sometimes need an extra dose, we need it. I know I need it. Anyway, next question. <laughs> How do I apply I'm going to say it wrong. Dunamis. 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 Anyway, you got in my life, how do I apply the power in the Holy Ghost in my Once life? Once you have the Holy Ghost in your life, it is it is daily. Mm -hmm. It will you you activate first of all when you pray, things are different now. So uh, in your prayer, uh, let's say you're dealing with an issue and you say, Lord, I, Lord, I'm asking right now in your name that you that that healing come into my my spouse's life or that healing come here or my boss begins to feel your touch in the name of Jesus. You see uh, it's in his name that we ask and the dunamis within us is the power to ask yes. like we never had yes. before and it gives us the authority to ask and then his name is the sealer on that. It, it's the mm -hmm. greatest authority over it, right? Yes. So you yes. so dunamis is a daily thing. So when you wake up in the morning uh, and you and you you have a moment with him. You'll feel the Holy Ghost. Like, yeah. I was six years old. I got the Holy Ghost. I can't. Exp I, I can still remember what happened. I can't explain to you how it happened. <laughs> just know that it did. And that's what's so powerful about it. It's mm -hmm. not something you can just naturally explain, right? Yes. But every day you use it. Uh, uh, getting up in the morning, talking to God. Next thing you know, you're talking in tongues. And what's that? It's a prayer language. So there's multiple things that come in dunamis, yes. and, and that that prayer language is needed because why? Whenever you're praying in your prayer language, mm -hmm. the enemy cannot quote what you're saying. Right. Right. So right. now now it's coded language. Exactly. Between you and God. Yes. And we're not telling the, the enemy, Lord, I'm really suffering with this, this yes. issue over here. And I, I love praying with with little ones about receiving the Holy Ghost because yeah. they understand the whole secret code, the coded <laughs> language. And between so you and God. between you and, and yeah. our creator, that's what speaking in tongues is. It's something that the enemy, the prince of the air, mm -hmm. cannot cannot encroach on that's, that's right. your heart communicating with god yes you know unencumbered and it's absolutely powerful so trust what god is doing in you and when you have the holy ghost in your life you will you will be bolder yes and what you it do it gives you courage yeah it gives you courage to say things you wouldn't mm -hmm. have said before yeah it gives you courage to walk up to, and pray for people you wouldn't have done before exactly. witness like you wouldn't have before yeah. Yeah. you'll notice it in your life and it's, it's a daily use thing okay so if I don't get the Holy Ghost, do I go to hell? Oh, man. You know, that's a great question to ask, and I, I'm going to answer it by asking you another question. Um, why wouldn't you want it? It's a gift. <laughs> you know, uh, why take the chance? Mm -hmm. why, why say, you know, I don't need that? Yeah. I've never seen, if anyone ever had a gift for me, mm -hmm. and I, if someone, I have a gift for you, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, I don't want that. No, I don't. He's the worst. He's like, babe, I got your gift. Can I, you want to know what it is? You want to take a guess? And I'm like, no. It's because I know if I do that, he's right. going to give it to me early because he just can't stand it. Right. And, you know, because he wants to give me this gift that that's he right. has for me. And that's how, how God looks at you, his child. He has this gift that he's just wanting to pour out on you and yeah. in you. Right. You, it's it's a gift. Yeah. Receive the gift. That's it. I, I I've learned a long time ago that I can't I don't get to tell God what I do or don't want mm -hmm. from the kingdom of God if He has it for me. Right. right. And the gift of the Holy Ghost is for every single person. Yes. Yes. And so to receive the gift, I have to be willing to receive it, and say, Lord, it's for me. Mm -hmm. Why Why take the chance? Now I can promise you this: if you want the Holy Ghost, you're gonna get it. There's no There's no if and or buts about it. If you want it, you're gonna get it. It's not gonna be a case of well, I asked him for it. I didn't get it. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm telling so, you. you so will. what happens if you've asked for the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and you, you've asked for repentance mm -hmm. and forgiveness, mm -hmm. but you still mm -hmm. don't have the Holy you don't, Ghost? You don't feel like it's happening in your life You don't feel yet. like you've spoken tongues or you're walking in power right. because the Holy Ghost is power. You right. know? Well, here's the deal. Every person responds a little differently, and, every, and I've seen it happen many different ways for a lot of different people. If you've asked and you've repented, start living the word. Yes. Just start living this thing. Because I've, I've seen people I've known that, that started living the word mm -hmm. and had a better walk with God than people I knew filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. I knew they were filled with yes. filled. They had a better. And then it just happens. Exactly. Right? Because it's a little different for every person. It's a little different. Now, in the scripture at the beginning, it was immediate for almost everybody that received it. Mm -hmm. And then and then you find church world and religious stuff, all that gets involved now. And so people have these concepts that, 
You know, I've been told my entire religious life, that's evil. You can't yeah, have that. It's not, it's not for, for people. It's not for people today. Yeah. And so a lot of that stuff gets in the way of you receiving. Right. And I think you touched on that whenever in the sermon you were talking about how our thoughts, you know, how we live our life begins with a thought. And so many times we become enslaved to a wrong thinking, to mm-hmm. a wrong pattern. So whenever you start yep. thinking about how much God loves you, yeah. how he is just wanting to pour out his power in your life. Yeah. And then just start thanking him for it. No, you may not speak in tongues today, but it's okay. It will happen. It will happen. It's that promise. It's a promise that he never yes. does lie and it that's will happen. It. And you're not doing it just to speak in the tongues. No. No, that's just one that's just a sign of it right. happening at that moment. It also says a stammering lip. Yes. And another tongue will my people. So th- there's there's this understanding that when God moves mm-hmm. on you, you will know it. Right. You will know it before anyone else has. Exactly. Anyone else does. You don't need somebody if, to point it and out. And if you need someone to walk up to you and say, did I hear you speaking yeah. in tongues? Well, you got the wrong people around you, okay? <laughs> because that's not for them to understand. That's You will know it. Right. And you'll know it first. Right. And so that's what I want to tell you. Trust what God is doing. Know what God is doing. And you don't have to understand all of it. Just yeah. trust what he's doing. Yeah. And it's happening. It's all a part of faith. Right, right. It's and we baptize other people. We baptize more. more. Well, I think we baptized three today. And it it's might incredible. have been a fourth one, but I missed it. Yeah. So uh, this is an incredible time here. And right now in your own home, if you want to receive the Holy Ghost yes. right now, you can do it right now in That's your right. house. Simply say, Lord, forgive me of my yes. sins. Forgive me of wrongful words, wrongful yes, thoughts, Lord. wrongful deeds. Lord, yes. I turn from my wicked ways. Yes. Lord, fill mm-hmm. me with your spirit, mm-hmm. with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Let it happen right now in my life. Let my life be changed from this day forward. Lord, let me have power yes, in my life. Power, and right yes. now, that person's praying that prayer right now. Yes. Lord, I'm asking for your Holy Ghost to feel yes. that living room right now. Yes. Feel that kitchen where they're at right now, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, let them feel your touch. Lord, yes. let the goosebumps yes. begin to hit the back of their yes. neck and, yes. the, and, along, their, and along their spine. Yes. God, let, let, the, let them feel the electrical yes. current of your presence, that, that lightning yes. flash. And, and the their, joy of the Holy mm, Ghost, Lord. Mm. In this day and age, Lord, we need yes. your joy and your strength like never before yes let each of us experience in such a new way yes. of your holy ghost being power in jesus name yes. and it will happen tell us when it happens yes let, let us, us know, know what happened we want to celebrate it will happen. with you and if you want us to come come to the house come to the church yes. we'll pray for you yes. it will happen too yes. so i'm telling you these are great days don't miss out on this dunamis this holy ghost this power this saving grace that god has for all of us we love you guys may god bless you and we'll talk to you soon